good night, good evening. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray that this day, this week, has been a great and awesome time between you and God, your Father, as we worship him in spirit and truth. In this time of the season, time of the year, where we are in celebration, we are in excitement of the celebration of Christ's birth. And his birth is certainly something that we are to always observe. And I pray that you're preparing your heart to, to look at the gift that he's given you. And it's an awesome gift. He's the first gift giver. And he's certainly given us a gift that money cannot afford. And so therefore, I pray that you are appreciative of the gift of salvation and what grace has afforded you to live and have forever. So, blessings to you and peace from our God. Tonight, I want to continue in our study, in our Wednesday night Bible study here at Glory to God Ministry Church Pavilion. I want us to hear again more about the goat that failed the grace. And to understand, there, here in the kingdom, there are people, all types of people, who make up the kingdom of God at this time. The kingdom of God is not physical, it's all spiritual. So when we talk about the kingdom, you and I have been invited into the kingdom through a born-again lifestyle. He's called us to be born again. He called us to be born of the Spirit. He's called us to be washed in the blood and redeemed and washed in the water with the Spirit and to be a new creature unto him. He's transforming our lives. And so therefore, the kingdom of God is made up of a group of people it's made up of a group of people that he's welcomed everyone to come into his kingdom. He says, come and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My, my burden is light. It's not difficult or hard. So here I speak to you tonight as a people in covenant relationship with God, a people who's in bond with him, a yoke with him. All this has to do with covenant, a bond. You're in bonds with him as dear son. Male and female sons of the Most High God. In the study of the word, because to look and see, some sons are obedient and some sons are disobedient. And then from the perspective of servants, servants who have stewardship, we all are in stewardship. And I said on Sunday, we're stewards. We're not owners. We're stewards of the things that God has given us. Everything you have in your possession, God has given it to you according to your ability. So he expects us to make wise decision and wise investment in the kingdom. And in that, there's going to be a return first to him, and then in that he will enlarge you for your faithfulness unto him. It's about God getting the glory. So tonight, I want to talk to us about the unprofitable goat, the goat that was unprofitable. He didn't bring gain when his Lord had given him. He did nothing with it. We call him goat. Goat has to do with the one that's hard-hearted. The sheep is the one of compassion and teachable, trainable. A sheep follows their leader and the shepherd. So I want us to go back to Matthew, and let's look in a teaching moment tonight. And I want to go slow to help us to understand the kingdom of God, because a lot of people, a lot of us don't understand the kingdom in, in the light of knowledge in which we should. You're in the earth realm, but God's kingdom has come unto you and, and is here spiritually. It's, it's not physical, it's all spiritual. And you and I get a chance to be born again. So through a born again uh, relationship, being called into salvation, you heard a call. I heard a call of God. He called you, he called me, he called us into salvation. We have the call of salvation upon our life, and we are hearing the Lord call and proclaim and preach and teach through men, apostles and pastors and teachers, and he's calling us with a heavenly call. This call is a holy call. This call is for everyone who will hear him at a time accepted. So he's calling us to come in and learn and grow and develop. And once we see into the kingdom spiritually, once you see into the kingdom, then you enter into what you see. And you and I then come into a binding relationship through by yoking up, binding ourselves with God, the Word. The Word is what 
was made flesh. The Word is what dwelt among us. So we're involved with the Word, the conversation of God as we study the Word. So tonight, this is a study. This is a teaching. And we look at the people in the kingdom, how in the group that he called, everyone do not love the Lord God. Everyone do not love is the Lord with all their heart, soul, and mind and strength. There are some who actually hate him, but you are in the kingdom. You're in the kingdom. You're in disguise. And some of us are pretending to be what we're really not. And that's why we talked about the five, the ten virgin, how five was wise and five was foolish, where they was all in the kingdom. That's a kingdom perspective, perspective of how the kingdom of God is set up. It, it says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Come at a time except. So a lot of us has came in, but a lot of us in the kingdom is not in love with God. So you go from being a people, some in the kingdom will love the Lord and some will actually hate him. So let's go ahead and get started with this. And I also want to say, uh, I want you to study in Genesis chapter 6, I believe in verse 6 and 7, where grace is been around since God have dealt with man. Grace is not new. God's goodness and God's kindness is not new. It's always been around. God gave uh, Adam and Eve grace when he created them and put them into the garden. And they failed the grace. They came short of the grace as well. So I want you to study that. Yes, they failed the grace. They fell short of what God wanted them to measure up with. Adam and Eve failed the grace. Noah was one in chapter 6. You're going to find Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man in his generation. He was perfect. It says Noah was perfect in his generation. Noah was perfect, sound, whole, complete in his generation. Now, it's our generation. Who are you? What are you? Are you in the grace? Are you a sheep or a goat? So let's look at the study so we can put it together so you and I can have an understanding. And I speak to you as people who's in bond. You're in bond. You're bound. You're in a covenant. You're yoked with God. It's like you're already in the marriage, but we have not gone to the marriage yet. But we are making ourselves ready for the marriage. And that's in Revelation. We learn how the wife had made herself ready. So we're having to look at a group in the kingdom. All of us is in the kingdom, but we have not inherit the things that is going to be given to those who inherit the eternalness of the kingdom. There's an eternalness of things. There's a, 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 a wealth of things that you are to inherit. So it's imperative that you understand, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, having the faith and keeping the faith. So let's go now to Matthew and look back at this young man who was... Um, a man who thought that his Lord didn't deserve what he had given him. So in Matthew chapter 25, verse 18, again, this is a servant who is equal to a steward because what he had didn't belong to him, belonged to his master. But he had that received, the one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. He took the possession, he took the good that he's supposed to have been managing and oversighting and administrating the money that was given. He took that money and hid it. Notice the behavior. Now let's skip down to verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gather where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Now, it tells us something about his character. It tells us about his heart. It tells us how he feels about his master, about his Lord. See, every time when God gives us his good, and you and I do not do as he's prescribed, as he's commanded us, is an expression of a heart of rebel that's rebelling. You're hard-hearted, uh, as this young man here. 
And we're looking at this because I want you to know this guy is actually a part of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like unto this. Yes, you and I have been brought in as a group. And what we're doing, he's now ministering uh, his will and purpose to us. And because we heard the call, we are now, uh, we are now reaching and striving to bring everything to the end goal or to the mark that God wants it. Paul said it like this. He says, I have not arrived, but I press towards the mark of the high call of God. See, the call of ministry is high, holy, and heavenly. God is calling us into a service to work. And in this work, we are not working out our, we're not working to be saved, but we're working to express fidelity, that we are people who is truly obligated and committed. Now, the other two servants, they show their faith. They show their faithfulness. They show their obligation. They show that they was in bonds with their with their master. See, every time we do God's will, it shows the commitment, it shows the obedience, it shows the obligation, it shows that you have an allegiance with him. So out of the three, we see one had no allegiance, one had no commitment, one truly was not obligated in his, in his faith. So he did what he wanted to do, and he was called a slow for servant. So notice that he says in verse um, 25, and I was afraid and went and hid thou talent in the earth. Lo, thou, there thou hast that is thine. I'm bringing you back what you gave to me. I did nothing with what you gave me. So this is how he feels. This is the heart. He said, his Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slow for servant. So therefore, when we talk about the goat tonight, go ahead and, and underline wicked and slow for. A goat is known to be wicked and slowful. I put it together so you can understand it. He, Jesus called him, he called him wicked and slothful. So to understand that you're lazy, understand that you're not productive, understand you're not yielding. So God expects all of us to yield a fruit of return. Whatever he give us to do, you and I want to be productive. We want to yield. We want a return coming back to him for his glory. He says, thou knewest that I reap is where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanger. And then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. So therefore, he's not letting him off the hook. You should have done something with what I gave you. The time I gave you, you should have done something with the time I gave you. The money I've given you, you should have did the right thing with the money that I gave you. The, 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 the family that I gave you, you should, you should have done the right thing. So I want you to look at everything that you and I have to know that he's still expecting everyone to do the right thing. He gives him his counsel. He said, you know what you should have did since you felt this way about me? You should have still done this, that I will have a gain. God expecting all of us to bring gain unto him. Now, he says, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. So therefore, anytime you are slow for, I'm slow for and disobedient, I will lose what I was entrusted with and the Lord's going to give it to someone else. And I want you to be watchful for this because a lot of us are going to lose because of our slowfulness and that connection with wickedness. When you know right and don't do it, it's considered wicked and slowful. A slow for you, a slow for man, a man that's lazy, a woman that's lazy, a church that's lazy, uncaring, uncommitted into the things of God. So therefore, as we talk about an unprofitable goat, I want us to look at this because understand he's going to bring it in. He says in verse 29, for unto every one that has shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken even that which he has. In verse 30, the note and has, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. Now, I'm saying this because I want us to understand that in the group of people that you see in the kingdom, some of us who've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, some of us who have come into a blood covenant relationship has been foolish and unwise. I'm not talking about the virgin tonight, but all that's in here. So you have all types of us in the kingdom. 
And Jesus now in this parable letting us see that there's some people in the kingdom who are really unprofitable for the kingdom. You bring no gain. You have no concern for God. You have no concern for the things of God. You have no concern for what God has called us into. So therefore, you will never yield what God will be pleased with. We will never yield the thing that will glorify him. So this servant is not getting away with his stewardship. God's going to hold him accountable. God's going to hold me accountable. God's going to hold you accountable for your stewardship. So he's now labeled as unprofitable servant. Servant is one who's supposed to be in bonds with him, one who's in covenant with him, one who was yoked with him. He called him unprofitable servant. So if you're in the kingdom, you are looked upon as a servant, you're looked upon as a, which is a steward. You and I are looked upon as sons. You and I are looked upon as brides who have a bridegroom. We are to now prepare ourselves for the things that he's telling us to prepare for. So in this, we see in that this young man is considered to be wicked and unprofitable. And I'm going to call him a goat because we're going to see the Lord is now going to come into the group eventually and do something with the group. Hear me well, you and I are actually already in the kingdom. You, you have a kingdom relationship, you heard a kingdom call, you heard God call you from darkness to the marvelous light. He brought you out of the kingdom of darkness and he brought us into the kingdom of light. This is all spiritual. So therefore, he's expecting a return. He is expecting you and me to be profitable for the investment that he's made. Now, you, don't, you and I don't have it sewn up yet. Just like Esau had a birthright, but you don't get the birthright until the right time or the proper time because the birthright is what belonged to somebody else. There's an inheritance that Christ have to share with you and me, but you will get it later. You are going to enter into some things of God after you prove faithful, after you prove profitable, after you prove commitment, after you prove in the sense that you're willing, you're obedient to the things of God. And this is a support of what I just said. He that loveth me will keep my commandments. So therefore, what is prescribed, you and I should maintain and be bound to the things that God prescribed for his will to be done. So now, note this piece here. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Doing what? And before him shall be gathered all the nations, every nationality of people that's been called into God's kingdom, every race, every nation, every kindred of people shall be brought, brought in. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divide his sheep from the goat. And this is where now he's likened this like a shepherd or farmer who have sheep and goat. Two different personalities. Two different characters, two different behaviors. He's going to come in and treat us. He's going to bring the group together, all that name the name of Christ. He's going to bring us all together, and then he will begin to separate us. He's going to separate the sheep from the goat. Find goat, again, as somebody simply hard-hearted, hard-headed, disobedient, and very contemptuous and very disrespectful. That's what a goat does. This young man said, I know what type of master you are. And you see, he was able to express, and what we would call this is contempt. This is a spirit of contempt of someone who's scoffing, a scoffer who's scoffing in the face of his master. And so his master calls him unprofitable. He said, this unprofitable servant, that's what he has been. And I want us to understand the unprofitable servant who's in the kingdom is now going to get cast out into outer darkness. Now, what's sad, the Lord have brought us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the marvelous light to be profitable, to be successful, to be a people that serve him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And therefore, expressing that and yielding a return back to him to express your fidelity to express your allegiance, to express, I'm obligated to you, Lord, and I will do your will. I know you have an expectation of me. 
I know you want me to be concerned for your will, your purpose, your plan, your desires. And guess what? You gave me your goods. I want you to look at everything you have and start naming. I'm in possession of my father's goods. I'm in possession of what my God has given me. Everything from my physical to my material to my financials, everything you have, you and I are supposed to be stewards who will bring a return unto him for his glory. So notice the unprofitable servant, which I call the unprofitable goat, because as he separates, he's actually separating the person who hardened their heart, the person who heard his voice, who heard his will, and did not do it. We're all in the kingdom. We're being preached to. We're being taught. We're being edified. We're being tutored in doctrine, in the apostles' writing. We're being explained to. We are being read to. Someone stands and reads the word, the Bible to you, and you hear it in your ears. We hear it in our ears. He expects us to take what we hear and become a doer of it. But disrespect for the Lord has always been a part of his creation because God made man that he's actually made with a spirit of enmity. Man is made with a spirit that he will uh, go and pursue that which is forbidden. That's in all of us. He made angels like that. So in that, God have allowed things to be set up that man will choose to worship him and be faithful to him and be true to him because he loved him. We see out of the three, there was only two who rendered submission, who rendered good stewardship, who rendered respect unto their master. And then the one who did not, he rendered contempt. A lot of us is in contempt. A lot of us is disdaining what God said. Nothing new under the heaven. Adam and Eve was the first people found in contempt, and they was cast out of the garden. They was rejected from the garden. Here, I want us to learn this and study because a lot of us, is in contempt. A lot of us is disdaining what God said. A lot of us is showing I cannot be trusted with the gift and gifting that you've given me. A lot of us is self-indulgent. So this young man have expressed that. So therefore, I want us to understand what's happening now. He's letting us see. I'm going to come back. I'm going to separate. You and I have read in the Bible what he says, let the wheat and the tear grow together. The enemy has a work to do. He has a work to do by sowing into the lives of people who hear his voice. But you are a sheep. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. That's in John chapter 10. You're going to see that the goat and the sheep is two different personalities, two different characters. The legion of a sheep, they are called bondsmen. They are in bonds with him. And Paul always talked about himself as a man who's in bond, who's in custody, who's in bondage, who's in prison with the Lord. Now, in that, you'll find that Paul was very successful in his service, in his obedience, and his allegiance. But whatever he had, God was his. The one that he regarded, he respected, and he was joined to God through Christ Jesus. So, He's going to separate and divide the sheep from the goat. He says that he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat on the left. So, then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father. To those on the right hand, on the right hand, I want you to understand when Christ went back into the kingdom, into the throne of the father, he went and sat on the right hand of the father. So therefore, notice Everyone who's in compliance, everyone who's being profitable, everyone who's bringing gain and success, everyone who's showing their allegiance and concern for God's will, then you are on the right hand. You will be on the right hand. He says, then he says, you, you bless of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. See, you have come into the kingdom spiritually to learn. I have come into the kingdom spiritually to learn, to be edified, to be taught, to be tutored. 
it, the Bible says that when we come, that we are coming in to learn of him. We learn. We yoke up with him. So therefore, understanding that you are in the kingdom, but you have not inherited the kingdom prepared for you. There's a kingdom prepared for you and me, those of us who's going to be sheep. There's a, there's a kingdom, a rule, a leadership, a place that is actually prepared. He said he wants us to inherit this kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The next verse is going to let us see the behavior and conduct. I'm not going to get into that. I just want you to see, when you talk about the kingdom, you are now having a kingdom experience where you and I are in, in the kingdom now under divine guidance of the Holy Spirit. And in that, we are learning about peace with God. We're coming into reconciliation with God. The Holy Ghost is revealing to us the re reconciliation and the atonement, and you and I are walking in that as an obedient children. That's a part of the call. You're coming into the joy that God is your happiness. Your greatest happiness is Almighty God. And we're coming into righteousness. So we're learning about righteousness, and we are putting on righteousness. We're dressing ourselves in righteousness as sheep, not goats. Goats fail the grace. Goats never measure to the measure that God wants. It's a high call. It's achievable. It's achievable. What God required me is achievable. I can do it by the grace. You can grow up and please God by yielding your heart and your mind and doing what he required. So this young man had never an intention to line up. So this is why we call him a unprofitable goat. When we say goat, we talk about people who have a hard heart. You don't care what's being preached to you, you're still going to do it your way. You don't care what doctrine says, you're still going to do it your way. You don't have an ear to hear. You don't have a mind to turn. So therefore, there will be people who are sitting in church. We are all sitting in these churches together, in these buildings together, but he's going to gather us all together. So at that gathering, he's going to be in his glory. He's going to come with his angels. And then he will begin to separate us, sheep on the right and goats on the left. Do not be a goat. Students, children, dear children, and you are, I, I want to say that you are in bonds with him if you're really in obedience with him. If you're not being obedient with him, you're not in bonds with him. You don't have a covenant with him. You have no agreement with him. You're not in concord with him. You don't walk with him because it's not about walking with him to do his will. It's about being in the kingdom to get what you want not to have the relationship that he desired. So now I want us to look at this man is actually known as a hater of God. Anytime you receive the knowledge. So now let's go over to Romans chapter 1. This same young man, and the reason why the Lord is not going to let us in to inherit the thing prepared is because our heart was not converted. Our hearts was not converted. Our mind was not transformed. The reason why a lot of us don't line up the word, because you're walking with a human, unwashed, unregenerated nature. You remember how Peter was walking with the Lord, but he was not converted? Yes, he gave a prophecy of something about who Jesus was, but he was not converted. Some of us is actually preaching, but you're really not converted. Now, Let's go to Romans chapter 1. I want to establish this, that Romans chapter 1 and how that once God reveals himself to his people in Romans chapter 1, let's look at the behavior of the people. Now, these are people in the group just like you and I. These are people in the group. And in this group, we have people who are rebellious, people who do not want to retain God in their knowledge. So let's look at verse 18. Now, the outer darkness being put into the darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing their teeth. So write down Matthew chapter 7. I want you to read the whole chapter. You're going to get the whole thing of that. Verse 18 says, For what? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I'm one of the men who hold the truth, who preach the truth, 
in unrighteousness. I know what is righteous and I know what is unrighteous. It is unrighteous for you to have your master's goods and not do his will. It is unrighteous for you know that God have a call upon your life and you not do it. It is unrighteous for you to know that sin is against God and then you go and sin. That is unrighteous. So I have knowledge, you have knowledge as a people in bonds, a people in covenant with Almighty God, the Creator, through His Son, Jesus Christ. He says they hold the truth, they possess the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Now, God has showed his will and purpose, his Godhead, everything about him, us, uh, of him to us, his eternal power. Now, I'm going to skip down because I want you to get this piece. Verse 21, I'm skipping. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Now, this is not everybody. This is a, this is a people, a part of the group. Now, there was three that we reason with in Matthew's gospel. There was two. One had five, one had two, one had one. We find the first two, they glorified God. They, they glorified their master. They did what was right. And therefore, they are called prophets. But it's talking about this one. He said, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart was darkened. If you notice that one servant, his foolish heart was darkened. That one servant that hid his Lord's talent in the earth, his foolish heart was darkened. He says, we're going to skip down some more. I want you to get this. He says, in verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, didn't like to retain God, didn't want to maintain, possess God in their knowledge. There's people in the church, this is why he have to divide. Goats do not want to retain God in their knowledge. Goats do not want to study to show themselves approved unto God, a workman need not be ashamed. Notice, goats will always be ashamed at the end because they have failed the grace. They didn't measure up to what God is looking for and what he's expecting out of the believer. So therefore, we're all in the kingdom of God, but we have not entered into the kingdom that is prepared for us to inherit and that things that is now prepared such as the joy of the Lord. We have not entered into the joy of the Lord yet. There's things that, that belong to Christ you and I have not entered into yet. What you're in a first phase of salvation. You're in a phase where the Lord is actually redeeming us. He's actually washing us. He's actually tutoring us. He's actually allowing the devil to even come and test us to see what sort, what kind are you. Are you a kind that keep the faith? Or are you a kind that actually abandon the relationship? So grace is here, but grace is being failed. Men and women is falling short of the grace of God's goodness, God's unmerited favor, God's loving kindness, God's tender mercies. Men are failing that because of the enmity of the hatred that's still there that you and I have not died to ourselves. I want to try and make this as clear as possible because I want you to get this. Now, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. It's, it's difficult to even go and do some of the things that they want to do. All right, skipping on down. Let's look at when it says, how in verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, fornication, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy and murder, debate, deceit, whispers. Verse 30, backbiters, haters of God. So there's people in the kingdom with you and I sit on the same pew with you, pew, come to the same pulpit. There's men who come in these pulpits are haters of God. They do not love God. The hatred for God is there. There's people singing in the choir, haters of God. They're called goats. And what have done what is happening, they are failing the grace of God. So understanding haters of God, backbiters, 
haters of God. Now, how is it that people can be in the kingdom and hate God? How is it that you can be in salvation and hate God when we do nothing with salvation? Because to be in the kingdom, you and I are required to bear a cross. You and I are required to hate our lives. In the kingdom, you will learn to hate your life or you learn to love your life. If you love your life, you will lose it. So therefore, you'll find yourself becoming unprofitable. You'll find yourself being hard-hearted. This is why there has to be a separation. He's not doing it now. It's not my job to separate. It's not your job to separate preachers and pastors and teachers, brothers and sisters. God's kingdom is going to come and separate us. The sheep will go to the right and the goats will go to the left. All because he sees when you do not do God's will, it's expressed you are a hater of God. Hater. This young man was a hater of God. Anytime you and I refuse to do God's will, it shows that you're hard-hearted. It shows you have no desire to please him. Now, let me establish this some more because I just want to show you that these are people who do not want to retain God in their knowledge. Do not want to retain, but make excuses for adultery. Make excuses for sexual immorality on any level. You're homosexual. You don't want to retain God in your knowledge. If you're an adulterer, fornicator, you don't want to retain God in your knowledge. And you notice this is what this is about. If you're a covetous person, you don't want to retain God in your knowledge. So therefore, you are here and you are singing every Sunday. You're singing right along with everybody else. You're going to preach right along with everybody else to the homosexual pastor, to the homosexual choir director, to the adulterous pastor, liar, thief. All of us is still in the kingdom together at this time. I want you to understand the goat that failed the grace is called an unprofitable goat because they never did the master's will. You never came into compliance with what God wanted from the study. So we study to show ourselves approved unto God. I study the Bible so I can understand God's will. Once we understand that, then I bind myself in covenant to God's will, purpose, and plan, and I do those things that pleases God, just like Jesus Christ did. He knew God's will. He did those things that pleased God. So therefore, I want you to mark haters of God. There's people, in this chapter 1, Paul is talking about people in the church. Paul is talking about people who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Paul is talking about people who understand the Godhead. Paul is talking about people like me, who's been called with a holy calling first into salvation. So therefore, you must understand, we need to go back and check our calling. Go back and check our calling. Because if you're not in, in line with the call that has a standard of righteousness. See, a lot of people in the church want God's kingdom to be set up, set up without a standard. A lot of us want God's kingdom to be set up that we can do what we want to do and get away with anything. What we notice that this young man is not allowed to get away. He's going to lose everything he has. He's going to lose everything that, he was, that was left in his possession, and what he had in his possession is going to be given to somebody who's faithful, who's loyal, who's committed, who's not hard-hearted. His wealth and his, the inheritance that he has is going to be transferred to somebody else, just like Esau and Jacob. Jacob got Esau's birthright. Jacob got Esau's birthright. There's some things that's going to be given to the faithful because the unfaithful, the uncommitted people in the church is doing contrary to God and not repentant of what they've done or said. You're not your own, brothers and sisters. You're not your own. Bondsman, you're in bonds with the Lord. You're in the custody of Almighty God through Jesus Christ, God's Son. So let's understand this that there's people in this chapter 1 that has actually, God had to give them over to their own reprobate mind, their own human nature, because they have displayed a hatred for God. Now, let's take another note, go with me, to Romans chapter 8. I'm only dragging you over there to show you haters 
is haters because of what's in the individual who mind the flesh. And so Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and verse 6 and 7. Let's start there. For to be carnal-minded is death, but to be spiritual-minded is life and peace. Now to the sheep and to the goat, you're, you're going to have a mind that's spiritual, a mind just like Christ, a mind that's being transformed, a mind that can prove what is good when it comes down to God's will, a mind that can prove what is acceptable when it comes down to God's will, a mind that can prove what is perfect. Three things that the sheep will do is going to establish what God loves. You're going to establish what God will love and embrace. You know it because you have a mind, a mentality, an intelligence that's being transformed. Your mind is transferred away from and into the highest level of intelligence, which is the Holy Ghost giving you enlightenment of knowledge that calls you to see what God have and what God will approve. So, verse 7 is the answer to the hatred of the young man. He said, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Yes, the carnal mind, the unconverted human nature, that animalistic nature that you and I have, if you do not come to agree with the Word of God, that's being read and be, being taught on Sundays and whenever you come together in our congregation. We are not in agreement with the written truth. We will find that a lot of us have a hatred for what God wants. And I remember saying in the doctrine that no one was to put their hands on me, and if they did, I was going to deal with them. But the Bible told me to turn the other cheek. I had a disagreement with that doctrine. I did not embrace no one putting their hands on me. And if they did, then I would deal with them because I was not in agreement with turn the other cheek. I was not in agreement with doctrine. See, when you're hard-hearted, it's hard for you to hear what God's Spirit have to say. Jesus Christ suffered and died because that was God's will. Jesus Christ is called a Lamb of God. So therefore, you are lambs and we are sheep. You and I have a spirit that's teachable, trainable, correctable. And in the teaching of the word, we are to grow and develop because we're putting on the man Christ Jesus. You take it off an old man and put it on a new man. But there's some of us in the group, in the kingdom, who is yet in your flesh. You will mind the flesh because you are of the flesh. But those of the Spirit will mind the things of the Spirit. You will mind the Holy Ghost. You will mind the conviction. You will mind the correction. Whatever he tells us to do, this is what we'll do. This is what we'll do. We're going to line up with God's Word. But the goats, they're hard-hearted. They're actually wicked. They're arrogant. They're prideful. They disdain. They dishonor. And they disrespect. Whatever you have belongs to God. He trusted you to do the right thing. Now he have a divine delay in your life and in my life. The Lord is coming back at an appointed time. Now because of his divine delay, it looks like he's been gone for a long time and he's never coming back. But he's coming back. Changes are being made even as I speak. Change was made today in someone's life. Someone had to give an account of their stewardship just today. Someone had to leave this life and they had to leave what they had accumulated and someone else is now managing what that person left behind. Now, here is because the mind is enmity. The human nature have deep-rooted hatred. That's what enmity is. Enmity is a hatred called deep-rooted hatred. So in Romans chapter 1, when it said they was backbiters and haters of God, is all because they are not in bonds with him. You're not in covenant with him. If you are an adulterer, if you're a homosexual, and you're in the Christ, you're in the body, you are in the body. But God is speaking and saying, turn away from your wickedness. If you are a thief and you steal and you take, 
and you do what you want to do with the finances that God gave you. You buy your houses, you buy your nice cars, you buy what you want, but you can care less about God's will. You don't give into the kingdom, you don't invest your time, your finances. You do very little with the money that belongs to God, or you do nothing with it. You're behaving like a goat. And I'm saying this because whatever church you attend, you have an obligation through by your doctrine to do right with your time, your talent, and your finances. Whatever you have, God has given it to you. He expects you to act like a sheep, behave like a sheep, make sure God's will is being done, have knowledge as to why you give your time, have knowledge as to why you give your talent, have, time, have knowledge as to why you give the money that you give. Every week I make sure what I have been entrusted with is to be transferred into the kingdom. God is to be blessed by what I do. For those who rob God, those who steal from him, is an expression that you are a goat. You are hard-hearted, you're wicked, and you're unprofitable. I know this sounds hard, but it's the truth. I'd rather tell you the truth now. I'd rather that you hear me now, because at the judgment, when he set up his throne and come with his angels, he says he's going to sit down and he's going to gather like a shepherd when he bring the sheep and he bring the goats together. Well, the goat's going to go to the left and the sheep's going to go to the right. So a hater of God is nothing more than an unprofitable goat. A hater of God, as it relates to God, if you're not doing God's will, you are a hater. You are a hater. You don't want to retain God in your knowledge. Brother Curl, if you're not in line with God's word, you are a hater of God. When you don't want to retain and possess the knowledge and the wisdom and the counsel and understanding of Almighty God, the sovereign ruler, Brother Curl, you are a hater of God. Brother Curl, you are a goat. You are unprofitable. You're not good. You are steal from the people. You are steal from the congreg congregation that you're over. And all you do is care about is what your gain is. That's what goats do. Goats are very hard-hearted people. Goats are very evil people. That's why there's a separation. And you notice they get cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So when you go back and you read these parables, understand he's talking about in similarity, this is what it's like when I rule over people in the earth realm. There's a spirit called hatred for God in the church. In, in the church. Yes. Was it the Pharisees and Sadducees who killed Christ? It was them. Now, I want us to look in the Old Testament in these next few minutes because it's a shame to know that there's a disdaining for God. I'm going to use this Old Testament, Malachi, and I know I had you in the gospel. I get you to Romans chapter 1. I get you to chapter 8. Now, this is Wednesday night Bible study. I want you to get this. I want you to be clear. There's a group. In the group, there's going to be a separation. In the groups, there are sheep. In the group, there are goats. Goats are very hard-hearted people. They take no correction. They don't receive a conviction about nothing. That's why he said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Anything contrary to doctrine, a sheep is not going to follow it. So those of us who've been stealing from God, who've been doing what you want to do, you love everything more than you love God, then know that you're behaving like a goat. God requires you worship him, you obey him, even when it's tough and it's difficult. Job is a, is a perfect example that I love to use because the Bible said Job was perfect. Seems to me Job was so mature, so complete in the knowledge, in the understanding, in the comprehension of who he worshiped. Job kept God first and foremost. Job was a man of perfection. Noah was a man of perfection. In a time when everybody's heart and mind was evil continuously, Noah found grace. Noah found favor of God because Noah behaved like a sheep. And a flood came, and God secured Noah and his family because Noah was in compliance with God. Noah was profitable for God's will in the earth. Let's go to Malachi. Now, just another book, because I'm giving you this so you'll go study. 
You'll go study the book of Malachi chapter 1 to show you that man's heart and enmity has been around for a long time. The hatred for God. Anytime you know what's right and don't do it, it's an expression, I do not love you. John's gospel says that, chapter 14, verse 14 and 15, I believe. He said, he that loveth me, he that have affection for me, he that is in a relationship of love and intimacy and care and concern, they have an obedience that they express because they love me. He that loveth me will keep my commandment. Sheep will always keep the word of God. The goats never obey. The goats are very contemptuous. Notice verse chapter 1. Let's skip down. Um, let's look at verse 6. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? Now, this is, this is God's people he's talking to. I'm showing you this because haters of God has been around for a long time. Even right here, he says, a son honors his father. There's a regard, there's respect for his father. And a servant, his master. He said, if then I be a father, where is my honor? Things I ask you to do to your enemy, I ask you to bless them, not hurt them. I ask you to forgive people. What I'm asking for from my body of Christ, from my redeemed people, from people in atonement, you tell me what you're not going to do. You tell me, I, I don't receive that. You tell me, and this is us because I've done that. I, I said, I don't receive that. And he says, I require that you turn your cheek. I don't receive that. That's contempt. That's disrespect. Anytime you see in the kingdom, you, once you're born again, I want you to read uh, uh, John's Gospel, chapter 3. Once you see into the kingdom, you enter into it. You enter into the agreement that you have seen by the revelation that's been revealed. So notice they're not giving him respect. If I be a master, where's my fear? Where's the reverence for me, says the Lord of hosts unto you? He said, O priest that despise my name. Here's that same spirit. That same spirit that's in Gospel of Matthew, where this young man is disrespectful, all because how he feels about his master, he display a disregard, he disdain. This is a goat. So this goat spirit is failing again right here. So he says, O priest, now these are people like you, like me, but now in the kingdom we're all called priests, kings and priests. He said that despise, disdain, disrespect, disgrace my name. He said, you say, wherein have we despised our name? Where, when? How did I disrespect? How did I, how did I walk in contempt? He said, you offer polluted bread upon my altar. You say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that you say the table of the Lord is contemptible. And if you offer blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? The things that they was giving God for a sacrifice, they took the lame, they took the sick animals and brought it in and they kept the best. I'm sad to report tonight that in the kingdom, a lot of people is giving God what they don't want. A lot of us giving him the time that we don't want. You give your TV more quality time. You give your football game more quality time. You give your basketball game that entertain you and waste your time. You give your cars and your houses more money than you give into the kingdom. Now, I say this because everything you have, you're not an owner, you're just a steward. Notice, he says, offer it now. He says, and if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Yes. Offer it now unto the governor, will he be pleased with thee to accept thy person, says the Lord of hosts. And now I, I pray, this is what he says, and now I pray you, I ask you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. He said, I'm asking you, Malachi said, look, what, I, what you need to do, you need to go back and ask God to be good to you, be gracious to you, because you're going to need something from him. You're going to need something, goat, from him. You're going to need something from him, Esau. You're going to want something, but Esau, you won't be able to get it. 
So this is a time that God is speaking to let us see. It's a time that I want to talk to you. It's a time that I'm saying to you, I'm looking for a people who understand my kingdom. You and I have not entered into the joy of the Lord. There's things that you have not gotten because it's not time to inherit those things. Let me say this. It is not time to inherit those things. You are proving faithfulness now if you do what's right. Or you're proving to be unfaithful like the five virgins. Well, five of them was unfaithful. Five of them did not have the relationship, and five of them, them did. So we see the kingdom of God is made up of all kinds of people. A little bit more as we prepare to close. He said unto them, he said, this has been by your means. Wow, you conjured this up. You, you, brought, you conjured up how you was going to use your money. You conjured up how you was going to use your time. You conjured up how you was going to use your talent. You know, that young man said, I dug it in the earth. You, you did this. This was your thinking. This was your ideal. He says, will he regard your person? Will he respect you? Says the Lord of hosts. Malachi is sharing this word. It's called the burden of the word of it to Israel from Malachi. He said, who is there even among you that will shut the door for naught? Neither do ye can defile my altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering from your hand. So this is how you and I are to understand tonight as I teach to edify you, as I teach to enlighten you. I want you to look at everything you have and say, Lord, how, how, how have I handled your goods? How have I dealt with you with what I have? Have I been contemptible? Have I been disrespectful? All I want you for is your, your goods. Uh, I, I just want you for your grace, but I really don't want the relationship. Because in this chapter, you're going to find it's nothing but blatant disrespect and contempt and disregard for God. They gave him things that they didn't even want. He said, from the, um, he says, talked about, will I accept this at your hand? I won't. He said, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, shall my name be great among the Gentiles. And to every place in incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, says the Lord of hosts. But you have profaned it. So I'm going to stop here because I want you just to read and study this. So go get your Bible. Don't believe me. Go read and study because what we're dealing with, people don't understand because a lot of our re organized religion have taught us to come in and beg for his hand but not be involved with his heart. God is a God of relationship. That's why he called Father. He's called Abba Father. And Abba Father wants a relationship with everyone that he's called. He called us with a holy call into salvation with hope that we will work out our salvation by expressing obedience to the word as we have been preached to, the word that we've read, the word that we studied, that we show God, our Father, that I respect what you're asking of me on every level, in every situation. You expect me to behave like this, then give me the strength to do so. And this is what he wants, a church that's going to grow up, a church that's going to be in compliance. Again, failing the grace based on what Hebrew chapter 12 teaches us, that no man should fail the grace. When you and I come short, you don't measure up to the standard that God, our Father, has. Again, this is not play, play church, play, play hour. As the old folks used to say, the sun is going down and it's late in the evening. And I pray that your house is set in order. Tonight, or tomorrow, always be in a place that you will be accepted in the beloved. You will be accepted in Christ Jesus. So I pray to the words of your mouth, to the meditation of your heart, that everything about us will be accepted in his sight. O oh Lord, our strength, our redeemer. This is our Wednesday night Bible study talking about unprofitable goats, unprofitable goats. These are goats that fail the grace. They never measure up. They never line up. They never obey. They're also wicked. Wicked. Yes, they do what they want to do, and they have no true concern for the heart of God or God's will and purpose being done in the earth realm. So those who are not saved, I want you to understand God has come through his son Jesus Christ to give us grace 
and to give us truth. And grace and truth have been passed out to you and me. So may now at this time receive it as a gift. And I want to say Merry Christmas. Grace and truth is one of the greatest gifts that God has afforded you to have. Blessings on your life and peace be unto you. Until we come together again, God bless you. Good night.